We're live. Hi, and welcome to Gay Out the City. I'm your host, Prince Electro Diamond. And today I am here with CEO of Downriver Divas LLC, drag queen Whitney Naomi. How you doing today, Bev? Hi, I am so good. Haven't had a nap or a snack, so don't know what's going to happen, but I'm excited. What have you been up since? <laughs> um... The first time I woke up or like the second time? Because like I, I do this thing where I like I wake up earlier than I need to. And I realize that I have to work until like two or three in the morning. So I go back to yes. bed. So the first time I woke up was like 830. And I was like, absolutely not. Put that <laughs> snooze on. And then I woke up again at noon. And I was like, all right, well, this is as good as it's going to get. Yeah, I mean, I get that. My body does not like to let me sleep because of my like crazy schedule between like going out and exercising in the morning before i go to work and then commuting to work i am up like monday through friday at four in the morning so it's like yeah i have not i, I promise you i have not gone to bed yet i promise you that <laughs> i know like <laughs> it's just it's my chaotic life so literally i woke up this morning i like got ready then i was up for a little bit and then i fell asleep twice i took like two naps during the day so that's why i'm all <laughs> good and refreshed <laughs> you said i feel like a spring chicken now no i can't. Uh, th this is my thing this is where i like to tell people my thing was i told myself i'm only gonna do two interviews a week that was my whole thing i'm gonna do two interviews a week this week I, this week are my fourth and then next week i've got i'm doing two tomorrow I'm doing one on Monday, one on Thursday, one on Friday. So what you're saying is you're a workaholic like me, basically. Yes. I mean, why it's why about, why not? Yeah, it well, my thing is it's about connections and it's about this is the only thing that I can do because as I was telling Whitney off of um off of screen, I don't really perform because I like to say the drag queens are intimidated by me. That's how I'm going to keep it. They're intimidated Ooh, by talent. He's coming for him already, girl. Okay, yes, honey. <laughs> and it's like, because I see them and I'm like, granted, you don't see people like jumping and splitting and doing all that shit. But I'm like, if you can't do all that, at least put on a show. Be entertaining. No. Bottom yeah, line, be, be entertaining. entertaining that's so funny i i feel the same way and then and, and you know being in the industry now for as long as i have been um i come across girls like that and i'm like i don't especially like okay not that i'm old but i am 30 i did just turn 30 this past year and 30 is not old however no. when these new girls who's 21 22 years old little babies come up and i'm like first of all fuck you excuse my french but <laughs> secondly it's just like all you new girls have like all these new like looks and and the way you you perform and and things like that and at the end of the day kind of also what we were talking about off camera it's like drag is yeah. art so do your thing yeah all i need is to be entertained if you entertain me i call you successful if you don't entertain me i'll let you know and either figure something else out or drop it all together Honestly, you can just drop it all together because I don't need the competition. I would like more money as a drag queen, okay? Just... <laughs> and, see, and see, that was the thing where it's like, I kind of understand things because I was telling Whitney that I'm planning on moving to Detroit. It's like, if I go to like, come to perform where y'all are at, I understand the drill. Like, I'm not sitting here because, first of all, as I said, as I've said, I sing live. So it's like, I do something a little bit different, but I'm going to support you. And it's right. like, as long as you like uplift what I'm doing, I'm gonna keep on telling people like go see this bitch's show. Like it's that's it's that simple. There's not this I'm in competition with you. It's like, no, we should be able to work side by side with each other. I don't absolutely and but and the it, I'm glad that you said that because I've thought about this and I've had this experience more often. So many times there's entertainers that think that because somebody else gets a spotlight, it takes their spotlight away from them. And it that's just not it. That's not what it does. Everybody, like I give something that you can't give and you give something that I can't give. And that goes with yeah. 
any entertainer in the business anywhere. So when people or entertainers, you know, kind of build up that hostility for some reason, because they feel a certain type of way, because this person's getting a spotlight over here or this, it's like, girl, stop trying to be a catty little thing about anything like that and just step up your game. If you're upset about it, that obviously means you think I'm a threat. So step your pussy up and then there's no issue. Yeah. And it's like people, I heard about this because there are two drag houses in my area. I'm obviously not a part of either of them because they don't see me, but it's like, thing is there's so much like infighting at one point and luckily i was living in orlando when people were talking about this and i'm like and i'm thinking it's a good thing i don't have a drag mother it's like because at the end of the day i'm not in this house i'm not in that house i'm in me like i'm doing something that's at least especially like with this i'm doing shit that they can't do it's like yeah you're known around here you're known around fort lauderdale i just interviewed somebody I'm interviewing Whitney Naomi in Detroit. I interviewed somebody in New York City. I interviewed somebody in um Louisville. I like I interviewed people all over. It's like I've interviewed people in Spain. It's like I'm doing something that y'all can't do. I'm putting my name out there and it's like if I can't do it as a musician, I developed a skill. This this isn't Again. hard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> anyway, work. So where are you originally from? So I'm actually born and raised down in uh, Detroit. Um, I don't actually technically live in Detroit. For anybody that's not a part of Detroit, um, I say I'm from Detroit. But if anybody is from Detroit, they'll come for me because I'm not technically from Detroit. I'm actually from Downriver, which is basically like the suburbs of the city. And it's a little bit south. So I like directly from downtown Detroit, which is what we call like campus marshes, if you've ever heard of it. I'm like 10 minutes away from that. So still relatively close to the city, but more on the suburby end of things. Um, but yeah, I've, I've born and raised down here and travel all over the state now for it. But I haven't left the state. I'm I'm a Michigander through and through. Yes. As I said, as I was telling Whitney off camera, born and raised Floridian. Lived in South Florida most of my life, except for the four for four years when i lived in orlando which is actually where i learned how to perform and like kind of discover drag and it's like with that as i said i've lived obviously in orlando and south florida and i'm like i'm like florida's not it like it's just i feel like I, everybody that lives in the state that they're from always says that about their own state whereas People who don't live there are like, oh, no, I've, I've always wanted to come. I've always wanted to visit. I feel like it's a good – I feel like that's a whole complex because anybody yeah. that's from Florida don't think Florida shit. Everybody from Detroit don't think Detroit shit. But coming around the other end, anybody who's not from there is like, this is kind of giving. And so I've just kind of thought about that. It's it's a great place – as I tell people, it's a great place to visit. It really is. It's a great place to visit. It is not – because – especially like with michigan at least michigan's like liberal detroit is or, or florida is so conservative like even like people say miami is a liberal area it's like not really not like, unless it's that little strip where the palace is and those other the other part right over yes yeah, south beach <laughs> I, love, I fucking love palace it's that's the only thing i like in miami i go to fort lauderdale more because it's like i know entertainer i know like burlesque performers there so it's like i have more of a fun time in fort lauderdale and overall at least the people that i know because again as we pointed out i know people all over the country i'm not loyal to a area i'm loyal to people so it's like right it's like yes overall if you had to tell me if you had to live anywhere in florida where would you live i'd say fort lauderdale but it's like I'd be like, I'd rather live somewhere else. I was originally, the, the whole Detroit thing actually only came about like three or four months ago. Because I was like, my original plan was move to Atlanta. Then I started looking at Atlanta. I'm like, Atlanta's no longer affordable. <laughs> and Detroit it, is. That's It's falling, yeah. I'm, Detroit is. And like we were talking about earlier. Yeah. That's I mean, that's why I really haven't, like, I haven't left. Like, I... 
I've thought about it and I've had a lot of opportunities, but like, just like financially and economically, like we're pretty, we're pretty set up here in, in Michigan. It's, it's probably one of the most affordable places in the country at this, at, just from right now. And I'd be the first to say if it wasn't, because I'd be totally down to, you know, yeah. venture out. But financially, I'm like, no, I'm, I think I'm good. I think I'm good right here. <laughs> yeah. And, it, and it's also, at least from what I heard, it's not what people think Detroit is. When people think of Detroit, they think of Detroit from like the 80s and the 90s. That's not what, that's not what any city is anymore. Like, right. No, I, I will say, like, even just from, like, personal experience, be, I, like, yeah. you know, I've been here for 30 years, yeah. Um, you know, and just growing up from what I can remember to, like, even present, it's just, it's come so far, and, and it, the city has been getting built back more, especially with even the last two years, it's just been the steady uphill climb, and, and I've gotten the privilege of working with, um, the companies that are actually building the city because like for example like detroit is about to like build this brand new skyscraper like one of the tallest build it like i don't know the all the details so i won't talk on that but that's not the point they're like building this new this new huge you know skyscraper that's supposed to be a monument in the city and they like cleared the i don't know what you call it the the, the area of where it's going to happen and they put in a huge park over this past summer just to have like free community like go to the park walk your dog and they had events there and like there was a main stage there and like like cute like swings and there's like a huge huge just like park where you can bring your family and stages and events and we did drag queen bingo there and we've worked with them and they closed that um over the course of the last couple of weeks and they just had it for the summer, closed it down, and now they're starting to build a brand new skyscraper. But I, the fact that like me as a as a drag queen, we got to work with some of the biggest companies in the city of Detroit and doing things like drag queen bingo and things that give us kind of recognition. And then now they're gonna take it down for a second. And they said that once the building's up, they want to start finding more things for our company to do, which is amazing. That yes, that sounds like. It sounds very much like you're incorporated with the community as a drag scene. I will say, like, and obviously not overall, because you always got yeah. dickheads and assholes and, and whatever. Everywhere. But the fact that, like, Detroit, like, if you're from Detroit, like, I will say the community, not even just, like, the LGBTQIA plus community, but just, yeah. like, the Detroit community, we're very much, like, we have each other's back. And it's a lot of growth and a lot of learning but i feel like everybody in the city is very like just opening open to having a conversation which most people are not and that's the first step is just like being able to talk and figure out what you want to do figure out where you come from figure out you know just anything and everything but the fact that like everybody from detroit is very loyal to their community and they're willing to have a conversation and if they don't understand something they'd rather learn it and understand it and then have a situation where they can speak from experience um or not but you'll never have at least in my experience that i've seen so far other than you know the every once in a while piece of crap but you're, you're um, gonna have conservatives everywhere that's unfortunately right. just how it is right but it's it's been a very amazing like process just to kind of see how it's kind of developed over the last year amazing so what was it like for you growing up as a kid um well <clears throat> let's let's get into it yeah let's talk about it so i actually grew up very conservative very conservative like my entire so obviously i'm from detroit i live in the north yeah my entire family is we are all from the south we are all from Middlesbrough, kentucky la follette tennessee we are southern redneck as as redneck as it gets i'm actually known in detroit as the country cupcake i do a lot of country music impersonations like shania twain dolly parton yes. um jody messina um miranda Lam like i could go on and on but like yeah. so growing up for me was in i grew up in the church that's honestly how i started i grew up 
you know, very, very involved. Like my family were all like deans and, and, and pastors and pastor's wives. And like, that's, that's my family. And then yeah. here I am. Um, but it was kind of, it was interesting because for the longest time, like, well, let me, let me be clear. I've always, I have always been gay. It, you, you heard my voice. I've had this voice since I was two months old. You know, they, I came out of my mother's vagina with glitter, a pair of heels, and we said, let's get this shit going, bitch. But um, it was kind of interesting just to kind of see the dynamic grow. And yeah, was my childhood not ideal for a gay kid? Absolutely. Was there a lot of things that looking back on it now as an adult, I was like, meh, meh. Yeah. But I also didn't have the worst childhood, you know, because I, right. I heard stories of people that had it way worse than me. And I feel like my story gets to be a happy one because I was strong enough to kind of find myself at an early age and be able to recognize that I have to be an example because the rest of the family or anything that was an issue or anything that was unclear, it was like that whole it was just the unknown. Like my family didn't know gay people. My family didn't know a gay, you know, at least that they didn't tell me. Cause you know, the, we know that whole parent complex. You don't, you don't know the whole truth as the child, but um, you know, I was the oldest of 12 um, grandkids and like cousins and all that stuff, not 12 kids. Shoot me if that's oh, the case, but um, <laughs> yeah, no ma'am. Um, but I just, I'm glad that I was the oldest and I just kind of felt that responsibility to kind of just educate my family on like what it meant to be who I was. And the fact that I kind of was so like bold, like right off the gate, like we're in a good place. There's always, yes. I, in my opinion, there's always room for us to grow as, as a family with my life personally, there's. Um, but I, I always look at that no matter what the situation is. If I'm not growing or learning something every day, then I'm not doing something right. right. But from where we were when I was like growing up to like where we are now, I would have never, ever in a million years thought that. So that's kind of like, it's reassuring. It's reassuring. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. Is it ever going to be? It might. It might not. But also nobody expects perfection and nobody really gets there at least in this lifetime so just striving for it is good enough for me and i think that that's yes. a really happy story for me see i i will say this i know the conservative upbringing i was you were raised christian i was raised catholic which Ooh, um, at least you got wine i was raised baptist pentecostal those are the people that you have to wear skirts you can't wear pants you you can't drink you can't you can't do anything anything no. like it was i grew up in a, in a church pew and it was you know when the holy spirit was moving through people and there would be like grown-ass adults in the middle of the church just like passed out but they like it's called falling into the presence of the lord where they would just pass out yes and now i look back at it and i was just like oh that's just janice from accounting and she's at church and she needs a little bit of attention her no. husband's not flicking her pussy so whatever but <laughs> <sighs> you know See, i'm glad i'm here yes i say in some ways i got the duality i got like the confusing duality of things because it's like yes i had the again as i said the catholic conservative upbringing but my mom was also the one who introduced me to like donna summer madonna and all that so it's like i had a little bit of both like Literally, I remember at 12 years old, my mom playing me on Bravo, on um, a Joan Rivers special. And like, she's telling me this. And she, yes, it was new Joan Rivers. And she's like, this isn't what Joan Rivers used to be. I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, I, w I actually, it's funny that you brought up Joan Rivers. I literally got a, a email the other day from an inquiry and they were like, can you do a Joan Rivers impersonation? And I was like, I mean, I would like to say that I could, but I also don't want to say that because she's so iconic. And if I screw anything up, they're coming for me and they're going to cancel me. So I have it, but like, she is one of my spirit animals. I yes. love her so much. You don't want your Trixie RuPaul moment. I understand that. Like, 
<laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yeah, I'm not having no chicken dinner. No, not at all. No. Love you, Trixie. Gotta, that was I nice. Do, I, I, I love Trixie too. Like, <laughs> but anyway, yeah. As I said, pretty much. The thing was, as I'm saying, I'm living in my hometown now. The thing is about this area. This is the kind of area where everything except for bars closes at 11 p.m. Like, and bars close at 2 a.m. Like, that's a stand. That's a standard thing, actually. Even in Orlando, like bars do not stay open past 2 a.m. in Orlando. Really? They just, yeah. I mean, they really don't here either, but I thought they, I thought like in Orlando, they would stay open until like three or four. In Miami, Miami, they stay open late. Miami and Fort Lauderdale and stuff stays open late. I know that. Although for a minute, like especially post pandemic, um, there was like a, like a legislation passed up here that like bars could stay open. And so for a minute, Detroit bars stayed open until like four. Was it like now? <laughs> Hate that. It, it never, it, it, it's done. And you, I, I will say the first time I ever heard that, I said, these people can barely hold their own when they're only allowed to drink until 2 a.m. You want to give them two extra hours? <laughs> to do I'm not I and I'm not cleaning up throw up in the bathroom. I don't know what your plan is. People don't know how to hold them hold hold to themselves. They're like, well, we're gonna make more money and we're gonna we're gonna, you know, make up for lost times. I get that. However, people are still people. And livers are still the same size livers as they were when pre-pandemic. People cannot hold their alcohol until 4 a.m. You, you, no. you ever heard a story about that? No. No. Unless you're in Vegas, but at that point, you know exactly what you've gotten yourself into, and who's ever come back from Vegas feeling refreshed. Nobody. <laughs> it is also it's like if you're gonna do that, you have to be like, <laughs> this would be a crazy ordinance, but this is what you could do is like after two a.m. you start serving drugs only, and that's why like the <laughs> now we're do that. talking. There that we you go. Could, that you could do. <laughs> <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> Get the get the get the helium tanks out, girl. Get those lines going. Sober these <laughs> motherfuckers up. Sober them up. Nobody's throwing up in my bathroom today, but everybody's gonna be driving home like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that. So, what was it like for you coming out? Oh, honey, I was never in. That's the thing. That's what I tell people. Right. Um, uh, I think like through like when I was younger, um, well, le confession time. <laughs> I definitely had a glow up the older I got. When I was younger, especially like in high middle school and high school, I was a fat fuck. I weighed 250 pounds. I was not taking care of myself. I was on high blood pressure medication. Like, it was just not, obviously not saying that heavy isn't beautiful, but I wasn't healthy. And that was the problem. Right. And you could see that. And it kind of just portrayed in every social aspect as well as physical, if that makes sense. Um, but growing up, like, I never touched on sexuality. I never had to touch on identity. Um and it was always like my, my, like in my own brain, I was like, I know what I am and I know what they're asking and why. Like I got, I got it. But like, I kind of hid behind the fact that I was a kid still, if that made sense. And I was like, it's, I'm just a kid. I'm just, I'm just in theater club and in marching band. And, and I'm not, you don't need to worry about what my sexuality is. I'm not. I'm not participating in that. I did not date in grade school. I did not have sex in grade. I was a virgin up until my summer year. It was the summer before I went to college is when I lost my virginity. I was a virgin through the whole thing. Like I was very just like, it, I don't know. It was just like, part of it was like a comfort zone. Part of it was, you know, I wouldn't have to say anything if, if it came up just because nobody really focused on that when I was young. And then here I am, a 30-year-old cross-dresser, so obviously people figured it out. 
But um, yeah, I never had that moment where I said, I'm gay or I came out of the closet on this date. Like that was never, it wasn't my story. It was never anything that I had. I mean, like I said, I'm 30 years old and people still, I am I get toll collect phone calls and I'm still, I'm still there like, no, this is her son. How can I help you? Like it, it was very much like, I never really had that but everybody just knew. And then when it was relevant, you know, at that point I was like, yeah, this is who I am. You have a problem. See, and when, you say, when you say that though, watch how many people don't say shit. You know, everybody, if, if you're, if you come out a badass bitch, you say, yeah, I'm gay. What do you have to say? But also I'm from Detroit, so that's just kind of how we handle lots of things like that, which is also why I think it's such a healthy place because we'll kick your ass and then we'll hug it out later. I don't <laughs> see I, I I developed that as I was older. So I did have a whole coming out thing. I did not come out as gay originally. I came out as bisexual. I will say in some ways that was your question. one foot out of the closet. Yes. To get the other one out there. I was in some ways I say it's fortunate because some people are like, I give it to people who have to come out to two parents. I didn't because I um came out four months after my mom died. So it's just having to come out to my dad. And then I have an older sister who was super accepting. And then I literally just found out like three or four months ago that she came out as well. So I'm like, well, now that makes sense. <laughs> you said, ah, uh, it was you guys. That's what yeah. I love telling. I love, I have a couple cousins who are also gay in our family on that like super Christian side. So, I mean, nowadays, I mean, like I said, now I'm an adult. I still talk to my family, but like, I'm just a bitch. So like, <laughs> I'll just look at them and I'll be like, see, it was your sperm. It had nothing to do with your kid. It was, it, that's your fault. <laughs> see, there was the good part. I had a bad part. So I came out to a youth minister of the church. Mistake. I yeah. told him about this. I told him about this performance idea I had with like a knife and how I practiced stabbing myself because clearly I'm dramatic, like dull. So like he left the room. He came back in about 10 minutes later. He said, okay, you have one of two options. Either you're coming with me or I'm calling the cops. Are you serious? Now, mm -hmm. now in hindsight, I would let him call the cops. I went with him, which was stupid. <laughs> Because he took, he took me to get a psyche valve. I was going to say, this sounds like it could go one of two ways. Because if we're in the Catholic Church and they find out you're gay and then they say, come with me. I'm like, C-O-M-E or C-U-M? Tell me the difference. <laughs> but they had told me I had passed it. But then, like, I was sitting in this hospital on the phone with my dad. I'm like, yeah, come back here. Pick me up, dad. Like, I'm all ready. And then all of a sudden I had a copy on me. He's like, get off the phone. I'm like, thinking, what the fuck? Like... And then I'd they stuck like, me. Get my pudding cup. They stuck me in a hospital room for five hours. They didn't tell me anything. They just sat around, sat around, and then, as I said, five hours later, they told me that they had Baker acted me, which is when they put you on a suicide hold. And they because then if you really obviously want to kill yourself. Yes. And then I got transported to a mental institution where I had to spend sixty-four hours. And then it wasn't done. It wasn't done when I got out. No, yay. You think it's done? No. Then he put me in a room with a therapist to try and pray the gay away. Part of me just wants to go into that situation just so I can, like, give commentary at just yeah. how ridiculous it is. That blows my mind. Blows my mind. Blows my mind. But as I said, like, this thing, it's like, y'all are idiots. Because it's like, once I started doing stuff with people, I just started making terrible, terrible decisions. So, yeah, good job, idiots. Like, that, you know what? That's why I said that. I said the more you push, the worse their decisions are going to be. Nobody gets yeah. that. Yeah, it's like, come to church. I'm like, I'll film in a church. I'll film one of my music videos in a church and I'll set the church on fire. I'll do that, but I ain't coming to your church. Like, fuck no. 
The only way I'm coming to a church service on a Sunday morning is if they have good donuts and coffee before the service. Because it's free. I'll go for that. That's about it. <laughs> no, I've not I have not been to church in a very long time for no no particular reason. The thing is too, it's like I'm not against going, but at this point, like the church is such at least in my eyes and the way I've seen it growing up. It has just it the church, like everything else in the United States, becomes a corporation and it becomes money hungry and it's not about helping the community. Like if there was a church, regardless of what your services are, regardless of what your views are, if there's just a genuine church that's around that has somebody, you know, feeding the hungry, you know, helping, you know, things like that, and there wasn't like a board or a pat or whatever you want to call it that was collecting the money and like making it like their career girl get out of there you're never gonna find them even though if you really think about it ministers priests fathers whatever you want to call them they should have also taken a vow of poverty because in the bible it talks about taking a vow of poverty but you think anybody's doing that in america right now no see no that's the that's the thing the only reason i would like be at all like some semi-religious now would be like just to be like a drag queen like minister to where like i could be like one of those scammers where i just take a bunch of money from people and like i listen i got or i got ordained i am i am legally allowed to marry people in the state of michigan and i have as a drag queen and i forgot where i was going with that why are we talking about that so theoretically, you could start your own church, right? If you wanted I could, to. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah, I could absolutely start my own church. And uh, don't get. And, but the thing is, I'm upfront about it. I said, yes, I am ordained. I am a woman of the Lord, but I also want my coins. And the good Lord told me to tell you. And they paid me. See, that's why I could never be ordained as a minister because it's like that whole religion thing i think it's because like i was again in those extreme examples of religion why would you want to be at all catholic like why for would you wine. want to be a part of the cult for like, the wine. that's why for the wine that's why i would i would, I would for the wine. if i could get the wine i love a cheap boxed wine and that's what you get at communion praise the lord you don't even, I don't even think you get that. I remember people telling me it tastes like rubbing alcohol. I'm like, that's probably because it's what it is. <laughs> Does it get the job done? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> if it gets the job done, I, I'll, I'll plug my nose. I put worse things in my mouth, girl. I do not know. I've not sat in a church since way before the pandemic. Like, oh, same. Abs yeah, same. Yeah. Way, way before that, even. So, what was it like for you moving to Detroit? Well, I've always been here, so I never moved. I thought you said you were originally from the. My family oh. is. Oh, I was your family. From, was, okay, right, 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 right. Uh, gotcha. Yes. So my family, like, I was the first generation born up here. Oh, like okay. my parents and grandparents, we they all migrated. I was like the I was the new generation of the southern. Okay. Of the Southern Bells that was born in the North, I guess. But um, but yeah, I will say to that though, there are some there are some words and things that I say that, granted, never you know, I spent all my summers down south, and I spent all like you know, especially as a child, like when I couldn't afford to like pay for my own vacations, and we'd do family trips. Everything was Tennessee or Kentucky, so like there's things that like, I'll say that people are like. Where'd you get that? Like, I call it, I do, I say soda. I do not say pop. I say soda. And yeah, right. I don't have a grandma or a grandpa or anything like that. I have a mama and a papa. Like, that, like, there. so it's like little caveats like that, that like, and I'm, for me, I don't even think about it. But it's not until somebody who is like, has nothing to do with the South that hears me talking about it. And they're like, what? And I was like, you don't know this? And then I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. It might not be it. it. Might not be a custom over here. But um, but yeah. So, but as far as I know, my family and enjoyed their move. Yeah, as far as I know. 
by that point you were already there so it's like you don't give a fuck like i didn't i was like you know just at that point i was like give me the bottle give me give me something put barney on yeah i'll leave you alone so i guess when i moved to orlando i guess i'll just go into this i just said i needed to get the fuck out of here like that was literally my first thing i'm like I'm like, where's the cheapest city I can afford to live in Florida that has, like, gay shit going on? Orlando. I literally moved. And when I did, because Orlando's two and a half hours away from where I am, so it's like, people are like, are you, do, do, you, do you ever go home? I'm like, home? I'm busy working. I ain't got time to go home. I don't got time to drive two and a half hours. No, like. Mm -mm. I I didn't come back here, so I was forced out of an apartment in Orlando. That's when I moved. That's when I came back. Like, that's the caveat in general. That's why I tell people. I'm. Always, I always tell people. I'm like, my parents. Well, they live. My parents and my grandparents probably live like a half hour from me, and they're always like, "Of course." I mean, you know, when we never get to see you, blah blah blah, the guilt trip. And I'm like, I just don't have time. I'm sorry. Yeah. And then they get really uncomfortable. I'm like, I'm I'm about to be cross dressing. You want me to come visit you before my show? And then Mamma was like, Ah! I said, I'll see you on Sunday for dinner. <laughs> Leave me alone. You don't want you don't want to see this cross dresser girl. You don't want to see her. She's much That's more cool. ruthless than your grandson. <laughs> yeah, it's like come to the come to the show, Grandma. Go ahead, like come on. <laughs> No, she would never. My dad would never. My mom comes though. My mom is is a really good, uh, lovely supporter of me. I love my mother. Well, because there are certain things I can't imagine when you do stand up, your mom likes coming to those kinds of shows where it's like, no, let's let. So, I'll give you. A, she's gonna hate me for even mentioning her on the, <laughs> but whatever. So, mom who is like my best friend. She is a drummer in an all-girl band who is like a touring band here in Michigan. They're actually very, very, they're a really, really well-known all-female cover band. And my mom is the drummer of this band. She drives a Harley Davidson motorcycle. She is a bad bitch. And I mean, to be able to birth something like this out of your own cooter, you've got to have some like, chops you know what i mean yes so we're both performers so it's it's more of like like obviously she was grew, she grew up very conservative and so like my relationship yeah. with her has been like we've had levels but we are yeah. her and i specifically are in such a good place and i absolutely love her and the fact that we're both badass bitches and we love to, we love to, everybody always laughs because like, you know, the whole facade about how like white kids are the only, you know, people that can tell their parents to shut up or call their mom a bitch. I love it. And it's so true. And I do call my mom a bitch, but it's because we like to try to out bitch each other. And we try to figure out who was the bigger bitch this week. Was it me <laughs> or was it her? And then we, I don't know, it's just, it's such a weird dynamic, but I love it. I would never, I would never do it any other way. <laughs> no, of course not. It's like, and the greatest thing is some people are like, granted, I love people who have great relationships with their mom and all that. It's like, when some people say like, do you ever feel lost not having your mom? I'm like, yes, but it's like, the greatest thing is if I want to start making jokes, I can start making jokes about my mom. She's not here. She's dead. She can't get offended. <laughs> you say, what is she going to do? Hear it? <laughs> That's the thing. I joke about being raised by gypsies all the time. Like, what's my mom going to do? She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's gold. That's gold. There's that, and that see, that's like an easy, especially in the stand up comedy world. Like, that's an easy yeah. in. The minute you start to you start talking about your dead mom, if you're doing stand up, you've won yeah. because they will laugh because they're just uncomfortable. And if you can tap into that, you're going to be the best comedian of the night. See, I would love to do stand up. My like, my favorite joke. This is some people might say this is racially insensitive. I don't fucking care. It's my life, not yours. Period. It's literally, it's literally because I say like, like I've, I've obviously like 
as I was telling you before, I've been fucked by many black guys. My joke is I've been fucked by so many black guys, my ass is a stop on the Underground Railroad. Like... <laughs> 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 oh, that is good. That's good. No. Anybody gives you shit about that joke, tell them to fuck off. That was funny. <laughs> No, it's funny because my drag mom is actually um, black. So she loves to, whenever we're, and we do shows together, we we host together, and she loves to just get on the mic and she loves to say, like, this is my daughter. She's black by injection. Yeah, that's, a, of course. That's what? the thing. That's where, like, what was it? I used to work with, when I lived in, or, when I lived in Orlando, I used to work with, a bunch of black people they're like you you honorarily just become black at some point when you've like taken enough black dick apparently like i didn't know that was a thing but apparently we, we have both hit the the threshold of whatever that is i don't know yeah. i don't know when it happened but there we go yeah, that's well i also lived in the hood when i was in orlando like i have i have no qualms about it my sister thought i was crazy i'm like i'm thinking you ain't see my grinder girl there's a reason why I see Mm. girl let's talk about that grinder girl <laughs> so what made you, what made you want to become a drag queen um i honestly when people when any when i get asked this i always say the same thing drag did not choose me uh or i did not choose drag drag chose me and the only reason why i say that is my first time in drag wasn't the most common story. I start my first time in drag was when I was performing in Chicago, the musical. And I don't know, are are you a theater fan at all? Like live theater, Broadway? A little bit. Like so no. Because yeah. if you were, you'd be like, yeah, no, but that's okay. So, um, Chicago the Musical, it's um, a Broadway musical, and I, I obviously, I was not on Broadway. This was very no long time ago. This was community theater days. Um, but and, I know Chicago. I've seen the movie. Like, oh, okay, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, like... <laughs> so, you know the reporter, Mary Sunshine, in the movie? Yes. The blonde yeah. reporter. So, in yeah. the Broadway musical, that is actually a drag queen it's written in as a drag queen because there is a huge reveal at the very end of the show that shows that she is a man and not a woman. And so it's like, it's a whole caveat because the show is about like crime and things aren't always as they appear. That's like, yeah. the theme. so this part, mind you, has to sing opera. So I sang falsetto opera. I'm going to let you sink that. I'm going to let that sink in for you. Yeah. I sang falsetto opera. And I uh, they hired a makeup artist and a makeup team. And they put me in drag for the first time ever. And I did it. And it ended up being one of the... I mean, people still talk about that show. That show was, it was over six years ago. And people wow. still to this day will talk about that show. Just how amazing it was. Not me particularly. Like, the whole cast was great. I mean, yes. I did okay. I did okay. But the whole cast was amazing. So from there, like, that was my very first time ever in drag. So it was kind of unfair because I got my makeup professionally done. I had costumers. I had, you know, all that stuff. But it was it was kind of just iconic to a point of where, like, people started asking me to do this. And they were going to pay me to do it just as a show like not a not a not in the theater not anything like i'm gonna pay you to have this little show at this little dive bar i'm gonna pay uh, and it just kind of started snowballing from there uh, into what it is today uh, and that's the honest truth so i just kind of you know i would have never been like yeah when i was young you know i wanted to be a drag queen when i was young drag had no representation in in, right, in, right. in the limelight at at all there was nothing so i you know and before i actually went to my first gay bar when i was you know old enough you know i didn't even know what drag was like i there, it was not mainstream in any way shape or form how it kind of is today so right. yeah i just kind of 
it just, it was, it was a snowball and I'm glad that I recognized that this could have been something and just kind of rolled with it. Cause I mean, I do it full time now. Like that's, it's my career and I, it's, it's great. I always say mine was kind of like an accident. So like clearly like I was performing in straight bars. I was performing as my boy self. And somebody said like, one day, one of the performers just went up after I was done performing, and they're like, I was like talking to them about this idea that I had because I had an idea of I didn't think of it as drag, I just thought of it as like a more flamboyant, like Elton John esque, like way of performing. And it's like, somebody says, like, Well, then why don't you just do it? Like, you get so into it anyway. So I remember the first time. So I put on the wig. I put on the sunglasses. I don't wear these. These are my interview glasses that I got from Brand Deal. Love Brand Deals. Period. It's like, yes. The sunglasses I wear, they're a pair of my mom's. And like, as I said, she died when I was 18. So she never lived to see me perform. So it's like, it was my first chance to like, not only look at a reflection of her in the mirror, but it's like, now I take her energy with me every time I perform. And it's like that's so special. That's yeah, so special. Yeah. yeah. And as I say, in those open in that open mic bar, it was great. The owners were cool with me, except for one night. So one night I had ended one of my sets by screaming motherfucker in the microphone and going into like a dance break. <laughs> then the next week I went to go sit down in my table. And the owner came up and she's like, Yeah, don't do that this week. There's old people in the audience. And the, my, my first thought is, am I not at a fucking bar? Like, I'm not allowed to swear at a bar. Like, it, was, it wasn't it was me. It wasn't me. They also, they had a comedian that went there, like, every week, too. And they, he did a joke about, like, this stripper, like, sliding down the stripper pole with her pussy. They're like, yeah, don't do that joke either. I'm like, then what the fuck are we going to do? Like, you're telling us not to do what we do. Because right. there's old people in the audience, like they know what they signed up for they know that they're in a bar after the hours of the of the day like what do you expect well they could get away with it because i used to i used to perform early because at one point i was doing two shows in one night in two different locations so oh, i was love, love those nights i was like leaving my house at 7 p.m and not getting home till 12 30 a.m and it's like and I did that for five months, and I'm like, I just, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, it's a lot. Too much, yeah. It's a lot. I, there's, I've had weekends. Um, was but I mean, obviously, especially weekends, where I've had to go from a brunch with a meet and greet to an afternoon, like late brunch with a meet and greet to a nighttime club show. I mean, there's days where I've been performing from eleven a.m. And my last show is at like 1 a.m. the next day. I love saying, me and my friends, as uh, we'll, we'll say, oh, Whitney's on her 72 hour shift. Like, that, there's days when, like, I will literally go for 72 hours with maybe having like a two or three hour nap. But if you, I mean, like, I, I never like wear the same face unless it's like a back to back show. Like, I'm going to wear this face tonight when I perform. Right. But like, I never like try to do, I've got my, I have some friends that will sleep in the face that they put and just like cover their face in all the powder and stuff. Like I will always, I'm very good about skincare, but from redoing faces to skincare and having like a three show day with a brunch and afternoon show and an evening show, there really ain't much room for sleep. Will I get it all caught up the next Monday, yeah. Mondays, I never exist. You will never see. You will. You don't know who I am on a Monday because I have never seen the light of a day on a Monday, at least in the last two years. Because well, you need to. And it's like, first of all, with that, it's like the only time probably like Whitney does what I do. It's like you go into like get ready in the morning, and then all of a sudden you see like you go to like brush your teeth, and all of a sudden your like white toothbrush comes out with like a hint of red or like. A hint of something so it's not like you fall asleep in your makeup potentially it's just it doesn't all come off like 
Right. Oh, don't get it twisted. I've all, I have yeah. definitely fallen asleep yeah. in my makeup. Yeah. Mind but you, there may or may not have been tequila shots involved, but that's a completely different story. But it's not you fall asleep. You fall asleep in a in a full face. I wouldn't even want to do that. Like, like shit. Like, as I was telling you, my schedule wouldn't. Granted, I don't have to do anything till like four o'clock then tomorrow. But it's like, still, it's like I want to do a completely different makeup. I'm gonna do completely different hair. It's like I'm not gonna fall asleep looking like this. Literally, you're going to see me. I'm going to literally, like, as soon as we do end live, I take off the headphones, rip everything off, and take off my face. Like, Period. I am, I'm, Lucky you. This yeah. face is going to last me until 2 a.m. <laughs> I haven't even told you how long it takes me to get ready. Somebody, when somebody, when somebody's fit. <laughs> how long does it take you to get ready? <laughs> it's because I don't have to do eyes. It takes me 30 to 45 minutes. <laughs> Nobody likes you. <laughs> hey, listen, listen. My, my my drag sister wants to do a YouTube video. I'm gonna know the day. She wants me like in two weeks. She's gonna do my makeup, and she's like, "You're coming to my house at ten, and we're going from ten till 6 I'm thinking, I'm like, I'm wait, like, we're gonna be, gonna be doing makeup from ten a.m. to six p.m. That's what she told me to carve out. Like, she wants to do it for YouTube video. So, I mean, like. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. I mean, I like a couple of hours to get ready. <laughs> if I need to do a fast face, I can within, like, I think, the, I think the fastest I've ever gotten ready. And this was with, I was at the gym. And normally when I'm not in this, like, I have, I yeah. grow facial hair. I, 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 it takes me, like, a couple of days. I'm, I'm blessed as far as that goes. So, I can have a full, like, tomorrow. I will have the five o'clock shadow by what's today. Today is Saturday. By Tuesday, I'll have a beard. Like, but I was in that stage at the gym working out and I got a phone yeah. call two hours before a show was supposed to happen. And they were like, Hey, do you remember when I told you that such and such show was next week? Well, it's this weekend and it's today. What? All I'm, all I'm going to say on record is that production assistants make mistakes too. That's all I will say. So I ran home. By ran, I mean drove. I obviously didn't run, but um, yeah, got home, did a face in 45 minutes. Don't know how that worked. Threw yeah. every costume I liked at that time in the bag uh, and just... I was like in the car driving, calling the DJ, and I'm like, "Do you have this song? Do you have this song? I don't have any time to send it to you. I need you to get it, download it or figure it out." But at the end of the day, I made it work. Why? Because she's a professional, honey. I, I know what I've done. It. I've only done it on this podcast once, so I accidentally like my first my first interview ever. I scheduled two people for the same day, and I'm like, for the same time slot, and I'm like. So I had to go back to one of them. I had to be like, luckily it was a few days in advance. So it was like, I realized something. I'm like, oh shit. Like, I'm like, listen, I would love to. Cause this is the thing. I had to weigh like presidences. One person was going to like an award show and they were coming to like promote that and promote the designer that they were going to wear. And then like the other person was like an OnlyFans content creator. It's like, it's like, you're going to have the same shit when I try and book you in like two, three weeks. Like it's going to be fine. Like, right. But as I said, I felt bad. I was like, I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, that's why now, like now, every time I have to go in my phone and like program the dates down. Cause it's like, if I am not organized, I have to know who the fuck I'm advertising, like what time zone they're in. Like all it's, it's a job in itself. <laughs> that time zone would probably fuck me up. Because I don't, I, I still, I don't, I don't know how, but like, I get that obviously there's different time zones, but for me to be yeah. able to, scheduling is hard enough. That's why I have people do it for me, but scheduling yeah. with different time zones. I, no, I can't do it. That's the stressing e me out just thinking about it. The easiest one is I, I love when I get guests in LA. Cause it's like, I can do the three hour difference, but even I was, I was talking to my friend and he's like, and I was talking about doing this, and he's like, 
he's like D-, he's like Michigan's in a different time zone. I'm like N-, I'm like no, it's not. Like I, it's like I because I looked at this. I'm like I know for a fact that Detroit's in the Eastern time zone. I literally looked at that. I'm like I know that. He's like oh, it's split up like Florida. He didn't realize it went. He was thinking it went this way when it goes this way. <laughs> yeah. That was the problem. <laughs> That's why I'm like I'm like I'm like I definitely know that. I definitely know that it's Eastern Standard Time. Like I know, because I have to check that shit. Because it's like, but yeah. <laughs> what times does it say? I sit there on my phone and I'm like, doot doot. Um, yeah. I'm like, it is. I'm like right now, yeah. it is 54. Yes. <laughs> but that's all I know. Don't ask me what it is in, in. Guatemala or whatever. I actually don't no. know where it is geographically. No, the, 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 inter, the, the internationals, I really have to, I really have to look at because it's like the furthest I've booked is I booked somebody in Australia, and it's like that was a whole different thing. I was like, I looked at them because we did an interview like around this time, and I'm like, thank you for getting up at seven a.m. your time to do an interview with me. Like, I really appreciate that. Like, bless their heart. <laughs> So, what was it like for you the first time you performed? Um. Oh wait, you already told me that. We're so that. shit, I was gonna say. So the first time I performed, which was the stage, the first time I did like an actual like drag show. Yeah. Um, it was in this little bar called Gizmos, and it was in a little city called downtown Wyandotte, which is in the Down River of Michigan, yeah. which is where I'm from. Um, that was kind of the first time I ever did a drag show, like as a, like advertised and, and brought in as, as a drag show. And I look back at it today and Lord have mercy. That was awful. And it was a hot mess and I looked horrid and I should have been put down like the dog that I was, but it opened a door to get to where we are now, which is a great place but it was yeah. it was cute i i had i will say the one thing that really made it great was the support that i had i had so so many people in the area people that i knew people that i didn't know just because this was like one of the first gay events that they have had really in a very 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 long time and so the support made it amazing did i do great as far as performance goes i honestly don't even remember i don't even remember the first song i performed to it was probably something country it wasn't believe it or not i do actually oh. the first song i did okay oh okay the first song i did i remember now the first song i performed to was burlesque um from yes yeah that burlesque. was the first that was the first song I ever performed to was yeah. Burlesque from Burlesque. And yeah. it was cute. It was amazing. And it was, I mean, for where I started, it was, it's so unique because it wasn't at a gay bar. It wasn't, you know, with a, with a, with a gay community necessarily. It was kind of just me kind of owning who I was, helping a business that needed money and having a community support just of people that like knew who I was or knew me or, I mean, and it was community theater people. It was just neighbors. It was, you know, just people that I had grown up with. And there was just such a outpour of love and support. It made it very, very memorable and helped the process of where we are now. Yes. Is, well, there's, there is something to performing the performing in like, theoretically heterosexual scenes as a drag queen it's it teaches you uh, as i said it teaches me how to work a room because like yeah as I, they were not on my side like they eventually like the audiences got on my side but they were not on my side because it's like they were used to those like bro bros playing their like little acoustic guitar and like i was sitting there with my electronic beats thumping through this bar because it's like but eventually it's like when you prove to people that you have the talent, they're going to get on your side no matter what. Right. Absolutely. So it was, it was, it was very, it was very cute. And I will say like, even from day one, and you know, I speak very humbly when I say this, like the people that support me, my supporters, fans, whatever, like just, I just call them my friends. Like, I don't, like, I don't know if I, I don't have to know them 
But if I see you at my shows and I like, I just view you as a friend, the, the support that I personally feel like I get from the community is, is what I kind of like pigeonholed my success on. And I absolutely, anytime I can rant and rave about the people that support me or the people that, you know, love what I do or think I'm entertaining or come to my shows, I, you know, that's, that's why we do what we do in the first place. Yes. Work. So what's the craziest, like, stunts you've done while performing? Ooh. Um, I jumped in a pool in full drag one time. Yeah. Maybe not, like, full jumped, but I... Yeah. So I do, um, I do shows at, it's called Parasol and it is a, um, LGBTQIA plus, uh, nonprofit that does, um, you know, community events. And usually every year they have pool parties, um, which are iconic. We get anybody and everybody. I mean, the people that have been there is just amazing. Um, and so we do performances outside and obviously it's like, everybody's around a pool, everybody's, you know, it's summer, you know, doing your thing. And so one year I did, um, it was actually last year, I did um, Candyman by Christina Aguilera, and I had the little 50s, um, oh, I did not even plan this, but I have it. I was wearing like this, my little, oh, yeah, yeah, work. Yeah, the little, yeah, like, yeah pin up look with like a little like yeah. sailor's hat and I had like a super little fossy wig and yeah I performed Candyman right into the pool and they loved it. I've also kicked somebody in the face before <laughs> with a heel <laughs> and left a very unflattering mark. That's definitely happened. <laughs> Um, yeah, I performed actually, th and this was when I was actually on, um, I was doing, uh, live theater again, and it was, um, the show was called Love, Sex, and the IRS, and it was a 1970s, very, like, 70s show, like, sitcom style live performance. It was on a main stage, but it was, it, it was that. And there was a scene where I was pretending to be drunk and I had to like climb over my, um, one of my co-stars on a couch and I had heels on and everything. And in the process of me climbing over my co-star, mind you, I'm supposed to be acting like I'm drunk. So of course I'm being dramatic. I had Obviously. swung my leg over to straddle before climbing off the other end and as i kicked my leg up to straddle he took a heel to the face <laughs> like to the eye ow whoa yeah. and he had to still the whole thing was like even when i had started climbing over him he was acting like he was asleep he was supposed to be asleep so he's on stage pretending to be asleep. He had to stay asleep and unresponsive, even though I just ransacked his face for another 20 minutes on the stage. Like that's all he had to do on the stage pretending like he was asleep. So I did the scene. Mind you, I know exactly what I did. So it's taking everything in me not to break character, right? Because I'm nervous, I'm worried, but also the bitch in me thought that that was the funniest fucking thing ever <laughs> so i leave the stage and obviously we have productions assistants and stage managers and people off stage so as soon as i got off stage and he was still on stage i said i need a bag of ice i just hit him in the face it, it was bad i felt it and so this we were all on the one side of the stage watching like the show go on from yeah. the wings and we were just watching his eye just turn purple. Like we could oh. physically see it happening. Like right yeah. now. It was getting swollen and it was getting purple. And it was so visible. Like even audience members were like, like you could hear people in the audience like talking about it. They were like, what's happening to his eye? And like, they didn't know that that was 
not supposed to happen. Yeah. But yeah, that was a pretty crazy stunt that happened while I was in drag on a stage. Yeah. Never forget it. See, I haven't had I'm trying to think. Well, this happened recently. This was literally just like an accident. So the thing is, like in drag, like obviously I said I wear like bodysuits, t-shirt dresses. I don't pat. So it's like so it's like when my when I do things like my actual ass is literally just there. So it's like I was in the middle of a Twitch stream. I was like going to change like the song. And then like, I thought the t-shirt would like cover me as I bent over and I was wearing a thong underneath. And then like, all of a sudden somebody's like, you just intentionally showed everybody your ass. I'm like, I swear to God, that was an accident. <laughs> I did I'm not know. Yes, and? Yeah. And that's why. And I basically said, and I ignored it. I'm like, I'm like, fuck it. You saw my ass. Big fucking deal. I like, said, you're welcome. Normally I charge extra. <laughs> Girl, <laughs> work. So, have you ever had someone steal one of your tips? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. I actually had someone, and I won't go into too much detail about it. No. But I was at a gig. This was last year, and I. Normally how it goes, like if I have a weekend gig, like a, like if, or gigs over the course of like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right. you know, I will collect all my tips, all my booking fees, everything. And then I go to the bank on Monday and, you know, handle my finances. And last day of a weekend, I had somebody go into my things and steal about $700. Yeah. And it was while I was doing the work of the Lord. And that's all I'll say on that, too. See, for me, this answer is obvious. As I say, anyone, again, I'm singing live. So anyone stupid enough to try and steal my tips while I'm performing, you don't think I'm going to sit there and be like, stop the music. What the fuck do you think you're doing? I'm holding a microphone. Like, you got control. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm, I'm I was fucking six foot three. Nobody's gonna mess with me. There you go. See, and I, I don't know when that had happened in that yeah. whole day, but I was devastated and, and I thought it was the end of the world. But looking back at it, number one, I believe in karma. So if it hasn't had hit that person already, it's going to. That's and you know what? I hope that tips from a drag queen could help your poor little pathetic life because you thought you had to steal it. Because at the end of the day, if you had come up to me and even said that you were short on money, and that's just the kind of person I am, I'd have probably given it to you. I'm just a good yeah. fucking person. When you're going to steal it from me, though, it's yeah. okay, my girl Karma, she'll, she'll, be, she'll be there when she gets there. I don't know when, but she'll be there. Yes. So, how have you reacted when someone's inappropriately touched you while performing? Oh, nobody could inappropriately touch me. I'm a whore. No, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. I mean, it kind of it's it depends on the situation. Like, have I had some? Have I had people take it too far? Absolutely. If you mm -hmm. can take it too far with me, that is something to be said because I am very much like I'm just a I'm just a lovey touchy feely person right. in general and like i don't mind like you know i i you know greet my friends with a kiss on the mouth things like that like and, and, and it's innocent and it's just it's just who i am i'm just a very affectionate person but for you as a person to have been able to make me feel uncomfortable that's a lot to be said and you yeah. were obviously a creep but if anybody has ever taken it to which it's only happened maybe once or twice but all, all I do, it, it's a very, it's a very easy process because I have security at every single one of my shows and I'm very good friends with the security guards because they hold my shit together. They bring me from my dressing room to the stage. You know, they, you know, help me get to where I need to go. And all I got to do is a snap, a point, and they're out the door. And that's the end of it. If you can't control yourself like that. And normally the thing is too, if it's a, that kind of a situation, the person is just highly intoxicated. Mm -hmm. 
at that point, they obviously shouldn't be there anyway. That's a liability. I mean, on top of, you know, being a drag queen and, and running, you know, bars, I've also been bar management before. You know, I've ran a bar, I've managed a bar, I bartended, you know, I grew up in the hospitality. So, like, at that point, it's just a liability. And aside from how you touched me from whatever reason, number one, you're probably not going to remember it the next day. So why even make a make a spectacle about it? I'll show it. I'll make everybody else in the audience watch it. And that will show them what to and not to do at drag shows. Yes. But at that point, like. Don't let one person ruin the whole night. Don't make a big deal about it. Be professional. Don't be disrespected. Stand up for yourself. But just handle it and move on and don't don't dwell on it. Don't don't talk about it. Just move on, because at the end of the day, the next day, when everybody wakes up the next morning, people are going to have things to think about and say. So just don't pay it. No mind. But don't let people take advantage of you in the industry. That's the bottom line. See, it's only happened to me once. I did keep my composure, but it's like. I was performing at a place without a backstage. So like when I wasn't performing, I was just like sitting among the audience and I had some drunk asshole. So again, you said strong people who do this kind of stuff mm -hmm. literally be like, I want to see you without your wig and literally just off my head. Like ripped it off your head. Mm -hmm. Like your yeah. whole wig, like it was ripped off of your head. Yeah. Is that, individual alive to hear the story <laughs> that's that's the thing as i said i was very calm but part of me because i was wearing platform shoes part of me wanted to like untie them and just go oh but you're right you do you have to that's a professional and i'm like i was unless of like the <gasps> embarrassing i was just pissed because it's like now i have to sit in the window and i have to figure out exactly where my part is with this wig it makes because it's a center part wig and I have to make sure it looks right on my face before I have to go perform my next number. So it's like... Right. Well, let's not get it twisted. If somebody actually physically yeah. ripped an entire wig off of my head, I would beat someone's ass. Absolutely. Yeah. 100%. Without a doubt. Yeah. I'm just talking about being like an inappropriate, like you've touched me one too many times or you touched me without... Oh, okay. Me. If it was something yeah. that big... Honey, don't get it twisted. I'm a, I'm a, a, I'm a white girl, but I'm still from Detroit. Yes. Don't don't touch my hair don't touch it and yeah. now i have a reputation where people don't yeah miss, the they don't like... miss touch it i should miss touch i don't know if that's a term but it's a term i just made up yeah it's like in terms of that's the one time this happened it's only happened to me in orlando it hasn't happened since like my thing is like i'm very nice like the thing is I feel like I have to be like, once I get to know people, I feel like I have to be super friendly because I am such a bigger, taller person. It's just like people are intimidated to come up to me. It's like, and I'm wearing sunglasses as a performer inside. So it's like, people think I'm scary. I'm not. I'm, I'm literally nice until you give me a reason not to be, then I'll become a bitch. But like, other than that, she said, don't let me take these sunglasses off, honey. This face only took me 30 minutes. <laughs> girl when i moved to detroit you're never gonna let me live that one down are you <laughs> no hope you you've already you already have you already have tea to to come into so perfect you're gonna fit right in <laughs> so okay have you ever hooked up with someone in drag <laughs> I feel like I'm having one of those um Utica moments on repost it. <laughs> Look at the material. Yeah, of course I have. Of course I have. I've had people who say no, like Well, that's because that's because they're not fun. Yeah, no, I have um, a lot of straight men. A lot of straight men. A lot of straight yeah, men. Yeah, I've gotten DL, DL guys before. It's happened. Well, here's the thing. The place I used to perform in Orlando is not open anymore. Mm -hmm. It used to be like this giant hotel where it had like, uh, they had like a regular parking lot. And then they had like a field where people go to get fucked. Or they had like a beach where people go like, 
out back and do drugs. Not the That's beat. where I went out. And I then I had like you a ain't getting sand out of nothing if you do that. Mm -mm. There was also a woods. So like there's like the beach and oh, all the woods. So what we lack in sand, we get in poison ivy. <laughs> Fabulous. That's why I only got my dick sucked in the woods. Like <laughs> you said, I ain't touching anything and I ain't touching the ground. Yeah. <laughs> And like it's a guy again with a cross dresser fetish, like six or seven times. I went back out there. I'm like, if you want to suck my dick, I'm gonna let you suck my suck my dick. Like, I mean, might I'm, as well. <laughs> Why not? If you're offering, I'm gonna take advantage. Okay, so we've kai we've kikied, but have you ever kai kied? I have to ask you that. What do you mean? We mean so, with another dry queen? Yeah. No. Oh yeah, me either. I'm not I didn't say that judgingly <laughs> I just said I haven't done it because it's like my thing is I don't know maybe it's because I was just only on the radar of like thuggish type guys when I was in Orlando and I was like performing and stuff or even in even the South Florida shit there's there's one time I was like at a gas station and a guy in the middle this was like 11 o'clock at night he's like i was done performing he's like he's like hey come here i'm thinking i'm not going into you it's that dark alley i'm like do you think this is my first time in drag bitch like how the fuck are you gonna beat me up like mm -mm, gotta be safe with that it's like this ain't my first day please period yeah. we know we know a thing or two about a thing or two and then yeah, they said the other time in that in that at that place, I got fucked in the parking lot. And then like in Orlando, and like the guy stopped. He all of a sudden got nervous, and somebody else pulled up together. I'm like, bitch. I'm like, whatever. Fine, fine, bro. Like, stop, <laughs> stop, stop, stop fucking me. Great. Like, I'll go back to my hotel room. Whatever. Like <laughs> that part. So oh, so okay. Since I know, since I looked at this, so what is the group, the Downtown River, or the Down River Divas? Yeah. Oh, the Down River Divas. So Down River is like a collection of cities, like where I came from, and it's yeah. like yeah. Wyandotte, Melvindale, Allen Park, Trenton, Woodhaven. Like it's just a whole little collection of cities, and it's just a nonprofit um, uh, company, a uh, limited liability company. Let me rephrase that, LLC. Um, and we just we put on drag shows. It's basically just it's a it's a, another little franchise and we give back to the community i do fundraisers for i've done fundraisers for you know businesses veterans and it's just it's a way to really kind of just dig in back to the community amazing work so what's your dating life been like <laughs> you think i have time for that girl <laughs> Um, no, I, I have dated before, but yeah. right now I'm just very career focused and yeah. it's a lot to date me. Let's be honest. I am a little high maintenance, but, um, it is what it a high, is. A high maintenance drag queen shocker. Um, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's so, crazy. Work. Um, okay. So, okay. So, yes, anyway. Little technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. We'll be back in a minute. Oh, wow. Okay. 
Okay, let's see. Ah! There we I'm go. Back. <laughs> Girl, knocked over the camera. The whole thing just came out. It's okay. I mean, believe me, you did, you, as you pointed out, you did this on a laptop. I have mean, plenty of people do this on their phones. They come in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm like, I just have to sit there and smile and be like, everything's fine. <laughs> I'm dead. No, I, I, I'm not going to turn the camera around, but like the way I have it, like level to where I need it, it's yeah. like sitting on a shoe box and then it's tilted a little slightly with, um, I'm not, it's tilted with an unopened, um, eyeliner. So yes. it's a little wonky, but we make it work. But what yeah. were we saying? So anyway, I was about to say, so like, I do have a man who's making it complicated for me down here. Cause like, he wants to commit, but he's like, at the same time, he's like, you're moving to Detroit. I'm like, well, because his thing is he wants to move to Orlando. My response is, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm like, girl, you're going to live in Orlando for a year, and then you're going to want to come move up with me in Detroit. Like, let's get real. There's nothing to do in Orlando. There's a reason that I want to move back. Right. It's it's weird. I feel like the, the, the bigger I got in drag and, like, the the more shows I did and the more like my name got out there. And now like, I mean, it's hard to go around Michigan without like hearing my name, especially in the drag community. I just mean, yes. uh, I feel like it's made it almost a little bit harder to date. I mean, cause let's be real. Why do, why do we continue to do drag in the first place? Normally a bunch of faggots just want to get around and get drunk with each other. That's how this whole thing started. So yeah. with that in mind, like, once I got good at it, I felt like the guys like just kind of distanced themselves even more and even more and even more. And it's like, I mean, am I looking for a relationship right now? I mean, not necessarily. I'm open to it. No. I'm, I'm not saying I wouldn't be, but also like I live a certain kind of life that dating me, you have to know what you're getting yourself into. Cause I am right. a full-time entertainer, a full-time performer. I travel a lot. You know, I'm constantly working or, you know, rehearsing or writing or something like that. So, yeah, it's it's something that I think about, but I don't try to dwell on it because, I mean, you could sit here and dwell on it forever and drive yourself crazy. Mm -hmm. But I always feel like when the time is right, whoever is time. my soulmate or or meant to be with me will reveal himself and yeah. he'll be able to handle me. So that, that that's what I tell myself but in the meantime i just usually cry myself to sleep at night on my pillow but you know what are you gonna do well that's the thing that's like it's almost as i say as an entertainer it's like you either need somebody like super super open-minded or you need to date another entertainer at least in my case where it's like you have to understand if i make out with a backup dancer that's not me cheating on you that's me performing a show right if I'm simulating getting fucked on stage, that's not me cheating on you. That's me performing a show. It's like absolutely sitting here, like flirting with the guests. That's what I do. That's like part of my thing. It's like absolutely. As I say, I learned. I learned from the best. My two interviewing inspirations: Howard Stern, Wendy Williams. Like just solid. solid. I, that's <laughs> why. Who is it? Somebody asked me for because. I did give I did give Whitney the questions before we started. I usually don't with the guests because I like to sit. I'm I'm someone who's like I have a tendency to go off script, so it's like it's like I love it's it. an outline. To be honest, though, to be honest, you did send them to me yesterday. I yeah. really didn't even get to them until so like ten minutes, ten minutes we before like we logged on. So it's like yeah. you didn't really give them to me, but you gave them to me. <laughs> but I just you know, yeah. And somebody's like, these questions are so good. I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, because why would I ask you the same boring questions that everyone else is going to ask you? I'm going to try and... I like the gritty yeah. questions. I want the tea. I want... I mean, these yeah, people but... are sitting here watching us talk to each other on a camera. Yeah. We better be talking about something good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's my philosophy. Give them the tea, exactly. honey. Exactly. So, well, I think I already know the answer to this one. We kind of indicated this before. What's your relationship to drugs and alcohol? <laughs> 
Duh, love them. No, <laughs> as I said, I think I already know the answer to this one. Uh, no, I um, you know, I think it's very necessary for me to be a cross dresser and not be completely a hundred percent sober. Who does that? I mean, some people do, and it works for them. I'm not one of them. Um, I do. <laughs> I'm like, congratulations, you make me feel. No, no I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I, I, well, um, I explain to you why I do it. Like. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. but um, I'm always also an advocate. Um, I did. Lo I lost my uncle to addiction and um, alcoholism. And one thing I really value is being able to speak about um, like moderation and like and 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 uh, for lack of a better term, what I'm trying to say, just like yeah. not overdoing things. Like too much of anything is not a good thing. Right. So for me to come up and say, yeah, I'm going to go have a glass of wine and I have I have a glass of red wine at the end of every day, you know, cool. Yeah. Do I go out and get blackout drunk every single day? Absolutely not. I got to work. I've got to make a living. I've got to do other things. Exactly. Like that, you know, Um. and and I have a variety of friends over over, you know, the entire country and. I know people that dabble in in and and a little bit of everything. And I am never going to be one to judge someone. I'm yeah. never going to be one to call someone out based on if I think they're doing something wrong. Or I, at right. the end of the day, where everybody's an adult and everybody has their own lives. However, I will gladly just be a representation of, you know, some people have had to go completely sober because of personal reasons or or whatever. Right. But I just like to be able to say like. I enjoy having a drink. I, and you know, I enjoy, you know, especially up here, legal it, weed is legal and girl, give me a nice little indica before I go to bed to help me sleep with our crazy sleep schedules. Like you already said, yes. yeah. but, um, I'm always one to just say like, it's all about moderation. Like yeah. you can have a good time. You can have a drink to relax yourself. You can, you know, smoke a joint or whatever, but to don't, rely on it never right. rely on any drug or any alcohol let it just right. enhance your time don't let it make you i say always do it to feel don't feel it hang on i screwed that up <laughs> i always say do it to feel even better don't do it to feel better right always be in a good headspace when you're when you are having a drink or or smoking a joint or, or doing whatever you do, but don't use it to be a crutch, if that makes sense. Right. Okay. And let's just stay for the record. I am not a hundred percent sober, but it's like the reason I don't drink when I perform now is because I had a night where, and this is the hard part in your twenties, you feel like you have to be like nice to everybody and say, thank you. I had a night where people were just buying me drink after drink, after drink, after drink, after drink. And then I got in my car and I had to drive an hour home. And Probably about, the smartest idea. About 45 minutes into the drive, I got pulled over by a cop. And luckily, my dad came to save me. Otherwise, I would have gotten a DUI. So it's like, right. If I'm having to travel like this far back and forth, it's like, Staying sober is smarter. It's like, especially when you're traveling like that. Yeah. Unless you have like a, unless they are, you know, paying for lodging overnight or things like that. The traveling, I normally, if I have a distance like that to travel, I won't just because right. it is a long drive. And at the end of the day or at the end of a show, you're already yeah. exhausted. Mm -hmm. and you have an hour drive home. Like, don't even, don't even drink, have a glass of wine when you get home. Yeah. then you'll be good but yeah it's all about like you said all about moderation and all yeah. about you know just, just yeah so it's like now i can it. yeah so it's like i obviously can i have a drink or two in a bar yes like occasionally i will do it but it's like overall i don't i don't and like in terms of drugs the only thing i got quote unquote addicted to so i have um bone spurs in the heels of both my feet so mm. So before I got on health insurance, I actually ended up having to take six months off of drag at the end of 
2000 last last year. No, 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 end of 2022, end of 2023. It's like, so before I got in health insurance, I used to take every day for four months, I was taking 18 to 24 ibuprofen a day. And then once I got on the health insurance, I'm like, right, I got to stop doing this because it's not good for me. Because it's I terrible for you to I took ibuprofen 800s one time for like, yeah. I don't even remember what the sickness was for. I will never take it again. I couldn't shit for a week. It was awful. <laughs> awful. Yeah. It's not fun. <laughs> but then, it really like, isn't. yeah, that's about it. But as I said, like, I'm happy to join somebody with a drink. I'm happy to be around people drinking. And if I have to stay sober that night, it's fine. Like, I understand as uh, I understand with your schedule, it's like you're on go, go, go. It's like sometimes you probably like drink the, the alcohol helps you get to sleep too, right? Oh, yeah. So, the, the alcohol kind of just loosens me up. The weed yeah. is when uh, the weed is what helps me sleep. Uh, yeah. That's because my, you know, I, I before like before I even started smoking weed, like I would struggle with like anxiety and, and things like that. And instead of you know, being on a Xanax or a prescription drug like that, I was like, let's take some natural things and let's see how that works. Yeah. Best decision I ever made. Never had an issue with it again. Yes. Work. So, oh God. So what are your thoughts on how the LGBT community is being treated today? I feel like that's a very open-ended question. Um, but I would say that We've come a long way. We still have a long way to go. But, I mean, in this world, especially in today's society, yeah. aside from even being an LGBTQIA plus problem, I just feel like everybody's going crazy. I feel like everybody's going crazy. Everybody's going nuts yeah. over anything. I mean, women women are, at, are in jeopardy right now with 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 you know, certain rights and things being taken from them, you know, minorities, you know, the, the gay community, like it, it, everything is just kind of all, it's not what it used to be. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, and if you know me, you know, like I don't talk politics. I don't talk. Yeah. I, I, I refuse, I will refuse to blatantly uh, no matter what, like, yes. because at the end of the day, I'm an entertainer. You want to watch me entertain. You don't need to know what, any of the other businesses but all i can say is like at the end of the day people need to ignore all the crazy noise because it's so easy to get so caught up in all the drama of everything trust me i know yes. but when it comes to like real issues especially in society or or politics or whatever like people just need to do their own research ignore the noise and at the end of the day they just have to you know stand up for themselves and do things like vote or do things, you know, that's going to make a statement instead of, you know, feeding into the cat and mouse game. Right. You know, especially in, in you know, talking about, you know, how the community is treated, you obviously talk a little bit about politics and stuff, but just the fact that like everything in politics right now to me is just very, it, it's all reality TV. And w w is, is, as a reality TV, you know, personality, you know, there's times and places for things like that. And right. right now it's just, that's not what it is, but they're going to keep doing that because that's what makes them money. And that's what gets them ratings. And that's what they feed yeah. into. And that's what we feed into. And it's this constant back and forth. So once people just stop that, cut it off, I'm hoping that things will get to where they need to be. And it's yeah. just divided in the country right now, but I know there are people that are working for us and they're super strong yeah. and, and we've got allies, but I know there's also people working against us. So at the end of the day, like keep your friends close, your enemies closer. And that's about it. But talking about it too much will even get you in a, in a, in a negative yeah. space. Cause at the end of the day, like if you wrong me, well, yeah. good luck. It's, <laughs> and there's some sort of like, I would say some sort of security with you being in Michigan versus like, because Michigan's overall like a lib more liberal area. Again, one of the other reasons why I think moving to Detroit will be a great thing because 
Lord knows. Florida. Yeah. Back when everyone was saying, like, they're trying to ban drag queens. My thing was, it's like, yes, I understand that's a problem for y'all, but it's like, I'm mainly doing this. You could ban all the drag you want out there. As long as I can sit in my house and I have a computer, I'm fine. Period. You can stop me. That's it. Yep. And finally, what's the biggest misconception about you? The biggest misconception about me? Um, I guess that depends on who you ask. In a sense, um, oh, that's a good question. And I really like, I thought about it, but I, and I even when I thought about it a little bit, I'm like, I'm so upfront and I'm just such a real bitch at the end of the day. Not like a real bitch, but like I'm, I'm, a, I'm real, yeah. you know? So what you see is what you get. Um, but, I just think that the like we how we when we were kind of talking about like dating and stuff like yeah the intimidation aspect and people you know being scared to approach me or being nervous to ask a question or take a picture or or you know that whole like facade like I absolutely listen I am a drag queen I did not do this by mistake I love the attention if you want to take a picture with me, please come ask to take a picture with me. If you want me to sign something, I literally last weekend at a bar, some man brought in a ceramic horse head into a bar and asked if I would sign it for him. And I said, sure, absolutely. Why not? You know, but I'm, I love interacting with the people. I love, yes. you know, being able to feed off of them. And I'm a crazy bitch on the microphone, especially when I'm hosting and, and doing shows like yes. that, but that's what I'm paid to do. Yes. You can also come up to me and have a normal conversation. And I would, yeah. I, I want to meet you. I want to get to know you. I want to talk to you. And I just, I want to love on you because at the end of the day, you are why I do what I do. Yeah. So I think that might be a little misconception that if anybody's watching that follows me or comes to my shows, come up and talk to me, hang out to me yeah. with, with me. Just don't be annoying because then I'll yeah. get my security team. Like I will with that guy that touched me. You know what I mean? Right. Just, okay. Here's the one caveat I'll put in there. Cause this happened to me once. Do not approach somebody while they're in the middle of performing before after is fine. Not to have I a did. conversation. I... If you're, if you're approaching me when I'm performing, you better have a dollar bill in your hand or I will not give you the time of day. No, somebody like, just before I get into this for with me, it's like I literally had my track playing in the background. Somebody was going, I was performing at a place on a stage. So like they were literally able to just like walk up. And it's like I have my track playing in the background. And again, as I said, I'm singing live. So it's like it was I was doing Do What You Want by Lady Gaga. It was my la last song. And it was like I literally had to sit there, smile for the picture, da 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 da. And then I had to go ha right in. And I'm like, and I'm like, I, I had to, like, there was no time to think at all. I just had to keep on my feet. And I'm like, you said, we're just going with it. That is the only, the only other time that that kind of shit's happened. There was one time I was performing at a contest. I lost. And I think it was set up for me to lose. So again, my track was playing. DJ is already playing my track. The person who was hosting the event knows that I sing live. They weren't handing me a microphone. And I'm like, I literally said, I need a microphone. And then I had to go in and just be da right in. And I'm like, you, you know, you know, this being a live singer, that kind of shit like fucks, fucks with your head. And you have to be like, oh, if I didn't have, a, if I didn't have my microphone and my music started, I would have told him to stop the music. I'm, <laughs> you guys give me an extra five minutes now because you stressed me out and my vocal cords <laughs> are hurting. <laughs> Girl. I need my mic before the music starts. Period. I will. Yeah. That's definitely one thing. When I work, when I do my shows, and I'm the show director or the host, like the bitches know. I run a tight ship. I'm very strict and I'm very professional. And yeah. in show mode, don't take anything personally because I'm in business mode. So I might yell at you because you have to be here at this point or whatever. But I'll come up yeah. to you after and I'll love on you and it won't be the thing. It's just very much like the heat of the moment. But it's also what gets us successful because yeah. everybody now knows when they work with me, they got to be on point. They got to be on time. They have to have they have to show out, you know, because yeah. I have some professional quality shows. 
it's been able to elevate me to the next level and the next level. So you either get on board and come on those levels with me and let's elevate yes. together and get better, or you're just not going to do it again. Okay. And I'm about to get into this question. As someone who's trying to move to Detroit, I will say, if you ever book me, I, I'm the person who tries to show up at least 15 to 30 minutes early. Cause like, I don't like that thing of like, showing up on time but there are some times where it's just like the craziest thing was i ended up having to i was invited to go back to that same event where i said i'd lost the event they invited me to go back and perform the next week but i literally had to tell them no because it's like i had scheduled that in an interview on the same day and i could barely make it on time to my own bedroom so i'm like <laughs> at that yeah. point it's like but other than that no i'm very professional i was a choir kid like all throughout high school i was taught that if you're if you're early you're on time if you're on time you're late if you're late don't bother showing up at all that was taught to me at the age of 14 15 period and that holds true yes so for me i've been told too one of them is that i'm intimidating maybe i am i I mean if you six three on top of that like yeah probably just a little the other one is that I'm shady. I don't think that I'm shady. I will admit, I am the most opinionated person in the world. I will tell you, if you are amazing, I will tell you you're amazing. But if you suck, I'm not going to tell you you're amazing. Because it's like, that's why I thought about moving to L.A. at one point. I'm like, I can't fucking move to L.A. I'm going to get kicked out of every party three days in the living there. Because because we're real. Yeah. It's like, you're a rapper who can't rap. Sorry. Somebody should have told you. Exactly. Exactly. No, I mean, I that, that, but I think it's better to be that way than than the alternative because at the end of the day, you're real. You're putting it out there, and at the end of the day, and this is how I always look at it: if people don't like what I have to say, then don't follow me. Then don't look at it. But if you keep commenting and telling me how much you don't like it, you're jerking off to me in the bathroom when your wife goes to sleep. We already know. Don't get it twisted. Yes. Anyway, work. With that being said, it was a pleasure getting to meet you. I was so Thank glad. Gosh. I got to... Likewise. Likewise. Yes. Definitely great making this connection in Detroit. Good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Once you yeah. um once you actually start okay. making moves to come up here, just let me know. I definitely will. We'll make something happen. Yes. So, but in the meantime, I'm going to go uh, perform yeah. for the children up in yes, the Royal Yes, I know. You got to go. And with that being said, this is Gay Out the City. I'm your host, Prince Electro Diamond, and I hope you've enjoyed. Bye.